Hey, my name is Sophie and I'm a photographer and filmmaker. Every year or so, I go on a backpacking trip and this year I went to Morocco with my father for two weeks. I got scammed, I lost my passport, it was crazy. In total, we traveled over 1,700 miles via public transport. So for now, sit back tight and grab onto your seatbelt because we are starting this trip off in London. This is a kettle that my dad brought from home because we predicted that no European, other than England, Airbnbs would have a kettle for us to make tea. We're lining up to get a stamp on our passport for immigration in the boat. In Morocco, you can take these taxis called con taxis, which basically allows the taxi to take up to six passengers and you kind of squeeze it a little bit. So our taxi driver was going around and scouting for passengers, uber pooling. We specifically told the taxi driver multiple times, Laga, we wanted to go to the Laga. One of the other passengers is also going in the same direction as us. So we were like, great, we can pay less. The ride was like 45 minutes. Once we arrived, we realized that he took us to the wrong place. He took us to the bus station, which is called La Gare Tuel or something. And that was a new bus station and it was further away. Which, and so we told him, no, that is not where we wanted to go. We actually want to take the train. The taxi driver said the train station is far and refused to drive us. And then he went on and said in English, Trust me, take the bus. It's only two to three hours. The train is going to be like five hours and it's a lot more expensive. He, got, he kept on saying, trust me, trust me. And so we were like, okay, I guess we will trust you. Uh, we bought the bus tickets and turns out it takes five and a half hours with bus to get to the town that we wanted to get to. And on the bus, we were placed at the back in this very, very cramped coach bus. And there we sat for five and a half hours, hilly roads and just cramped. At our hotel, a man offered to take us to his restaurant for dinner. After dinner, he took us to his father's shop. We didn't buy anything. His father then took us to his wife's shop. We still didn't buy anything. I think they must have been pretty disappointed that we weren't crazy rich Asians. Silver. Silver. This is silver. That's iron. Mm -hmm. We scratch it. Then after, we put in fire, burning like a blue color. 
and we increase the silver inside with the hammer. Then mm. we burn in and we polish it. Mm. And first time in the fire, it will be like this. Yeah. This, this is our hotel for the night. So these kind of hotels are called Riyads. Basically, this is the room. And through these windows is actually downstairs where we have breakfast in the morning. There are also these shelves which are insanely tall. I think it's around 10 feet high. And today is our second day at Meknes. We're going to this town called Volubilis. So this town was founded in 3rd century BC. It was the furthest that the Romans had invaded into Africa. And under Roman ruling, the town grew rapidly. The town was later on abandoned 1,200 years later in 11th century AD. These women are literally sitting inside the bathroom of Volubilis selling toilet paper. And I believe they're acting independently. Now, here's what's interesting. Volubilis, a town constructed 2,000 years ago, has an Arc de Triomphe. They also have the biggest avenue of the town connecting Arc de Triomphe to the main city gate. What does this remind me of? Paris. Paris is the world famous Arc de Triomphe and they also have a world famous Champs-Élysées that connects Arc de Triomphe to the city gate. Whoa, isn't it amazing how us as modern society still take inspiration from our ancestors 2,000 years ago? So now we're on our way to Moulay Idris. Moulay Idris is a holy town that is so special to many Moroccan people because in the year 789, this is where Moulay Idris brought along the religion Islam with him. And accompanied by us is a bunch of turkeys and ducks. This little kid over here just told me that this is his house and you can see that they have a bunch of lambs that they're herding, sheeps. Whoa. Wow. gross in the beginning and in comparison to French escargot it tastes a lot less garlic or buttery because there's none of that at all and it's a little bit bitter <laughs> so a lot of Moroccans in smaller towns have never seen Asians before so we kind of became a local's attraction. Here's us posing with our fans. Okay. Thank you. Merci, thank you. Good morning. Today we are taking the train to a town called Uchda. We are spending seven hours on the train because the town is right next to Algeria.
When I woke up from my nap, my dad was surrounded by all his fans. They called him Jackie Chan. I'm also loving the photo editing apps that they're using. Yeah. Yeah. In Sophie. Sophie. I want to take a photo of me too. And then we realized we even had fan cams. Could you find a way to let me down slowly? Thank you. Wondering why there is a table on top of another table? Well, that's because the plug is all the way up here, and yet we want to make tea. So my dad is building a construction so that we can fit the kettle up here. So when we first arrived at Uchda, the city just looked significantly more lifeless and people, you could just tell they're a lot poorer than Meknes. For dinner, we, we were looking around for a restaurant to eat at. But there were only cafes that were selling the exact same thing along the entire street, which was roast chicken and skewers. After we finished, there was basically just like bones and like meat stuck in bones and some bread on a table. I went to order more food and this girl, she was probably less than 10 years old. She came in and asked my dad if she could eat, finish our bread and chicken. And my dad said yes. So she started eating them. Once I finished ordering food, the owner kicked her out. But we felt really bad because she was very hungry and she was just really enjoying it. So I chased her down with a basket of bread but she was too shy to take it. And so that was really sad to see in Uchda because we didn't experience that anywhere else at all. See that? That's Algeria. But the border has been closed since 1994. And since then, basically, no Moroccans have ever crossed that border. And it's guarded by the army. No, no one uh, have all of this. So uh, what I read about is that the people in this oasis or in, uh, in most of uh, the oasis in, uh, in Morocco, they uh, share all, all, all what they have. So they have, uh, some people have the rights for the water, um, some people have uh, to, to plant new, new uh, trees. Um, uh, <laughs> Some people uh, are owners of the landscape, mm -hmm. and that's why. Uh, oh. So that's why they have to share. We spent the last day of 2019 walking around Fikik, seeing how the residents and locals greeted each other and helped each other. Really melted our hearts. That night, we counted down with the owners of the guest house and split a cake. It was the sweetest cake, but the sweetest day to end the year with. We're now trying to walk towards the sand dunes at the back to catch the sunrise. This is the interior of the guest house that we're staying in. We are now in a town called Mazuka. Yesterday we spent 
12 hours commuting on two different buses and then two different Grand Taxis. It was very tiring. Literally, as soon as we step out from our hostel, you can see the sand dunes. The most amazing thing is that I'm currently reading the book Sapiens about how humans came about millions of years ago and they're selling fossils here. This morning we went to watch the sunrise but we couldn't see anything. Like we couldn't see how majestic and how gigantic it is but now we can finally see it which is insane. Okay here you can see literally five minutes away from the hotel and it looks gigantic and it's huge it's so cool we're now trying moroccan ropes so this is how people wear it Hello man, what in Gladiator, aquí. Me. Oh. Gladiator. Caspa. House. Me. Ridley Scott. Russell Crowe director. Six months. Give me a strong. Kalisi. Kalisi. You? Kalisi. We. Son. Son. Five. Oh, your son. Yeah. Indigo. Indigo. Yeah. Come on. Ship, ship, ship. Oh.
and we're at Atlas Studios where they shot so many incredible movies and TV shows such as Game of Thrones. Cléopâtre et la série des Dix Commandements. Donc chaque film échange. On the twelfth day of our trip, we finally arrived at Marrakesh. And this is our Riyadh. It was one of the nicer places that we stayed at throughout this trip. So the street that we're walking on right now is actually called Khu Yves Saint Laurent because this is the street that Yves Saint Laurent's home is located at. This stunning garden took the painter Jacques Majorel 40 years to design. It's one of a kind, completely different to the typical European gardens we normally picture, and it's filled with beautiful fountains, ponds, cactuses. The garden is also adorned with pots, benches, and rails that are painted with a signature bright blue and yellow paint. This cactus is taller than me. YSL thought this garden was so beautiful that he bought it and used it as a place for his inspirations. His ashes were also scattered here, so you can say that I'm standing on YSL right now. I'm gonna try the traditional hammam and a bear bear massage. So first I had my massage done and afterwards the lady took me into the hammam room which is basically a very hot steam room. She rubbed black soap all over me and then I sat there for 30 minutes and she checked on me every 10 minutes or so. And then she would scrub me and exfoliate me once it was all done. During this process, you're obviously naked. However, to keep this video PG, I decided to keep my rope on. Now it's just very relaxing and I feel like a new, fresh, rejuvenated body. <laughs> finally arrived at our final destination which is this beautiful seaside city I kind of feel like I'm in Aladdin look at this marketplace fish spotted fish the ground is very, very dirty for some reason. And then you sit in the back here eating lunch. And here are some local fish for ya. So everyone is eating with their hands, so we kind of have to do the same. Close to the harbour, there are approximately 30 fish stalls where you can pick what seafood you want and then they would cook it for you on the spot for you to sit down and enjoy. We ended up getting lobsters, anchovies and some shrimp 
for around 29 USD. Fish soup. Right here is the Atlantic Ocean. If you take a boat and you keep going straight, you will eventually reach Florida. So hello, my non-existent Florida friends. And our last stop is grab some of the local fresh pomegranate juice. <laughs> Cheers to our last day in Morocco. The animals by the beach is like chewing on it. So today was our last day in Morocco and it was a very, very eventful day. First of all, I was looking at my pocket, fishing for my phone, and I couldn't find my passport. We're leaving tomorrow, and if I lose my passport, I'll have to reapply for a new one. I would miss my flight to London, and I'll miss my flight to New York the day after that. And then I would miss my other flight to LA because it would probably take a quite a long time to reapply for a new one. And so we were thinking, oh my god, we'll have to leave right away to so the British Embassy, which is in Rabat. Rabat is the capital city, which is three hours away by train. We were looking for it and my dad was asking all his friends what to do. So this really kind person took us to the way station and believe it or not, it was right on the table of the oh, policeman. Okay. And oh my God. So I'll literally like, even though it's sunny here, like in my mind, it was like, like raining, you know, like it was windy and it was, it was like all gray, it was all black and white and like sad songs were playing in my mind. But then, oh my God, as soon as we found it, like the birds were chirping and then like, oh my God, the sun was shining again. And like, oh my God, it was like an amazing feeling because like, I can't imagine like missing out on all those flights at the beginning of this year. And just, just that would have been horrible. I can't even imagine. So, so it turns out this really, really kind Moroccan fisherman had found it by the harbor. If it's a policeman. This, the man who took us to the police station told us if we had money in my passport, my passport would be long gone right now. Never ever put your passport in your front pocket if you're a photographer because you're gonna forget about it when you're taking pictures. So this is our Airbnb. The rooms are pretty big and our Airbnb host is super cool. Her name is Benny. She's a Hong Kong radio host who now lives in Essayura and she shares her Moroccan stories with her Hong Kong audience. As you may recall, there are no Airbnbs, hotels, that have a kettle for making tea. But guess what? This Airbnb does because our host is from Hong Kong too. Ta-da! Amazing! The most unique things about Essaura is that horse and carriage here is used as a taxi. So basically, if you're at one point of the town, you can take this horse and carriage to another point of the town for like two dirhams, which is like two cents. It's insane. That was a long journey. Thank you so much for sticking through this with me. I hope you enjoyed watching it. I really enjoy documenting this with my iPhone and my Sony 35. Honestly, if something is already amazing, you don't really need all that fancy gear to capture it. If you like this video, please subscribe and tell me which part was your favorite. And I will see you on the next one, if there is a next one. Oh, and here's something else for you to enjoy. <laughs> Meh. <laughs> 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 <laughs>